Force of Fury. Good evening and welcome to this special edition of News 36, Force of Fury. I'm Stacy Scheibel. And I'm Robert Hadlock. When Central Texas was hit hard by tornadoes earlier this week, News 36 gave you the most complete and thorough coverage as the situation progressed. The damage toll is still rising, but here's where we stand at this point. The death toll now is 30, 27 from the town of Gerald alone. There are several injured and more than $20 million worth of damage. Five areas in all were hit by the tornado. Gerald, Belton, Salado, Cedar Park, and the Hazy Hills subdivision in western Travis County. But talking about all the destruction is nothing until you see the real force of this storm's fury. You've seen the image, but it seems only hours ago it was an image reserved for the movies. A force of fury a mile high. You live in the Gerald area, over toward even as far west as Florence. I'd pay particular attention, and I would take my tornado precautions at this time. Again, a tornado warning in effect for northern Williamson County. A tornadic thunderstorm about five miles north of the Gerald area, moving to the southeast at about 10 miles per hour. It looks like an empty field. A subdivision of 70 homes was once here. The twister swept away buildings, leaving only the slabs. Treasured images, bits of lives interrupted, litter the grass. A tiny town of 400 loses dozens of people to this storm. The rest of the damage is still being counted and doesn't stop here. We've had reports in the past few minutes of a confirmed tornado on the ground at Highway 1431 and 183. The roof of a grocery store is peeled away. Even in this confined space, you can see the fickle path of Mother Nature. Rows of fruit stand untouched next to demolished shelves. Homes are ripped apart in a subdivision. And in the hills south of town, the homes are farther apart, but no more lucky. There used to be two trailers on this piece of land. Now everything is flattened. Trees are uprooted and livestock suffer. And so much more. Amazing video and images those of us in Central Texas will not soon forget. Indeed, and as we've showed you, this week's storm took a deadly tour of Central Texas. The storms started just south of Waco and came down the I-35 corridor, wreaking havoc along the way. News 36's Jim Spencer joins us now live. He was the first forecaster on the air when danger threatened. He's in our first warning weather center tonight. Jim? Well, Robert, along the way, as many as 10 tornadoes touched down from south of Waco to southern Blanco County. That many twisters in what's essentially a small area means we're now left to deal with this path of destruction. The sky turns ominous early in the afternoon, dangerous by 2.30. By the time it hits Gerald at 4.05, we know what it looks like. And I could see it over the trees and it had a long tail on it. Mm -hmm. And I says, oh no, dear Lord, please not that. Deadly and devastating, barreling through town. The only thing I lost is my dog and my bird. And your house. And my house and my everything. And just, <laughs> you name it, I lost it. It takes just 15 minutes to rip apart Gerald. Then the storm heads south to Cedar Park. 415, its first touchdown in the area, a shopping center. We got everybody to the back of the bathrooms in the store, and as we got back there, that's when it hit and blew all the windows out. And we could hear it going over top of the roof, and then we could hear it pass over. Glass shards hang in their frame. A blockbuster video store is demolished. Then there's a touchdown across the street. And I think he was in there shopping and he used his cell phone to call his wife and in the middle of the conversation he screamed and that was the end of it. We were able to go up to the 
the front doors of the store and you can see a gaping hole about 60 feet wide with the, the oh, light from the sky shining in and everything just demolished. Looking at the Albertsons from above, it's amazing anyone survived, but quick action by an employee got most to safety, a freezer in the back of the store. One man is trapped in the rubble and the storm travels on. The rail yard of the historic Hill Country Flyer becomes a playground for the windy giant. Then the twister hits again. Oh my God, I've never seen anything like this. Dawn Richardson saw it coming. I was playing with my daughter and she went over to the window and she started banging on the window and pointing up to the sky and I said, what are you looking at, Alexa? And I ran over to see her and I got scared. I was talking to my girlfriend, so I grabbed the video camera and then right when it touched down and the black got up, I went ahead and grabbed her and went into the bathroom and dropped the camera. I gotta go, it's really close. All right, bye. I'd always heard that it would sound more like, like a freight train or something, but it didn't. It just sounded like continuous thunder. And then my ears started popping like they did on the airplane. And so I ran in the house because of the low pressure and I heard things hitting the house and I just crouched down on the bathroom floor with her hugging her saying, God, please help us. <laughs> when it's gone, this is what is left. Streets full of debris, residents in shock. The Twister sends this RV across the yard at least 30 feet away. As I was coming down the street, I saw it go behind that house, go behind my house, go straight across my backyard, pull that old oak tree straight up out of the ground, 100 feet in the air, and crash down on my house. Central Austin feels the storm next. The rain pours down, trapping motorists. Some seek shelter beneath the road. Water rages in swollen creeks. The wind bends trees. And just before 5 o'clock, the storm moves south again. <laughs> Mother Nature is no less gracious in the hill country. Neighbors who got out safely return to heartbreak. Just missed our help. Oh, my gosh. Even our best friends have lived here. <laughs> but they keep what's truly precious. Just next door, a man lost his life. And I've, I grew up out here. There's never been, this is amazing. I've, I've lived here, I'm 28 years old and I grew up right here. And uh, it's just totally amazing to me. The Gerald tornado has now been classified an F5, the most powerful designation a tornado can be given. Russ Ray, a little later on in our special, will tell you exactly what that means. Thanks, Jim. I think the touching part about this is that people have really just wanted to help in any way they can. People have reached out, and there are several ways that you could do it if you want to help the victims of this week's tornado disaster. People have been responding, and you may help the victims of the disaster by making a cash contribution to the Central Texas American Red Cross. The phone number on your screen, 1-800-928-4271. KXAN also has our own tornado relief fund with Area Norwest Banks. Send your donation payable to the Red Cross. To the address here on your screen at P.O. Box 2019 in Austin. The zip is 78768. Or you can drop off your donation at any of the Central Texas locations of Norwest Bank. We're all fascinated by the extraordinary pictures taken of tornadoes and their aftermath, but that's only part of the story. What happens in our atmosphere to make these funnel clouds appear? Well, we're going to tell you what conditions are necessary for tornadoes to form and how those conditions contributed to the Central Texas storms earlier this week. Force of Fury will return in just a moment. First thing that went through my mind is, uh, where are my little girls? I was worried they were out. And, uh, let's make sure that they got into safety. And the destruction of the deadliest storm ever to strike this area. But many people are asking, how did this happen? Let's go back to Jim Spencer for some answers. Jim? Stacy, Texas is in Tornado Alley. More than 100 tornadoes touch down every year in our state, making it one of the more tornado-prone areas on the face of the earth. And we are in the heart of tornado season right now. The months of April, May, and June are our peak months for severe thunderstorm and tornado development. While these storms are not unusual this time of year, the intensity of this tornado was extremely rare, as News 36 reporter Russ Ray tells us. Long before the devastating tornado hit Williamson County, forecasters knew a severe weather outbreak was building. 
at the National Severe Storm Prediction Center in Oklahoma. Meteorologists tracked the storm three hours before it moved into our area. Thunderstorm developed around 1 p.m. south of Waco, Texas, and actually moved southwestward along this uh, cold front that was stationary. The Central Texas spring climate, especially here in late May, makes conditions perfect for nature's most fierce storm. And that afternoon, all the ingredients were in place for tornadoes to form. The warm air coming up from the Gulf of Mexico meeting the cool air out of the Rockies. When those air masses clash, warm air rises, a storm develops. The air at different levels starts spinning. The result? A tornado. There was some warning. Those watching Jim Spencer had about 25 minutes lead time. This uh, tornado will likely move across the Gerald area. You folks in Gerald need to take your tornado precautions. So much hit me. I was just being pounded by stuff. But Virginia Davidson didn't have the TV on. She was out mowing the lawn. She's banged up but survived the tornado. Many of her neighbors in the flattened subdivision weren't so lucky. Virginia saw the twister coming and jumped in the bathtub. I felt the bathtub moving. You know, it, first it was just the noises and the shaking, and then, then the bathtub was moving. But everything was black. I couldn't see anything. And, um, and then the next thing I knew, I'm out on the ground and things are hitting me. Even among tornadoes, this was one of the worst. Tornadoes are ranked by a scale, F0, the weakest, up to F5, the most powerful ever recorded. This low F5 tornado means it packed winds between 260 and 270 miles an hour. Even the people who took the right precautions to protect themselves couldn't be saved by a tornado this strong. It was too large to outrun, and uh, judging by the damage, uh, too strong to have survived it in anything except away from its path. People in Gerald are asking, why us? Especially since only eight years ago, they were hit by another deadly tornado. Is it something about the town's location or terrain? No, just terrible luck. Gerald is no more susceptible than anywhere else in Central Texas. The odds are incredible enough to be hit by just one extremely rare F5 tornado. The Gerald tornado alone killed more than died all across the country during the entire tornado season last year. You know, sometimes we'll go through an entire calendar year when more than a thousand tornadoes touch down in the United States and never see an F5 tornado like the one that hit Gerald on Tuesday. To give you an idea how rare F5 tornadoes are in Texas, there have only been two in recorded history in Central Texas. One of those up in Waco in 1953. It wiped out a large section of downtown, killed 114 people. Another F5 tornado hit McLennan County in 1973. F5 tornadoes make up less than 1% of all recorded tornadoes, but they are responsible for 67% of tornado fatalities. If you see a tornado or are under tornado warning, there are things that you can do to protect yourself immediately. Underground shelter is always best, a storm cellar or basement. Ordinarily, a low level room, interior room on the lowest floor will provide you protection. You cover with blankets, you stay away from windows and doors and outside walls, and if you are in a mobile home under no circumstances, do you stay there. You get out, you seek more substantial shelter, maybe even lying, ditch in a, uh, lying in a ditch or in a ravine or in a low spot nearby. Unfortunately, with this tornado, we understand that a lot of the people that uh, were killed in the tornado did exactly this. Those are the folks that did not have access to storm cellars or to underground shelter. They went to that interior room on the lowest level of their home, and they got in bathtubs, and they got down low. Unfortunately, the magnitude of this tornado, extremely rare event in this part of Texas, is such that there is no safe place if you are in the tornado's path. It will wipe out literally everything, even as we saw evidence of pulling the grass up from the ground. Hopefully, again, in our lifetimes, we'll never experience another F5 tornado. Robert, Stacy. Jim, thank you. Communities around Central Texas are pulling together to help out their friends and loved ones. When we return, we're going to show you how Central Texans are pulling their resources to make sure their neighbors don't go without. I've lost six of my students, freshmen, sophomores, and a junior, and their families, so it's important. Thank you. Now return to a special report, Force of Fury.
If there's any good to come out of a disaster like this one, it happens when a community joins forces to help support and pray for one another. Gerald is no different. As Marla Bean tells us tonight, if the residents of this little town weren't close before, in the past couple of days, they've become a community united. I've lost six of my students. Freshmen, sophomores, and a junior, and their family, so it's important. It's painful. A sentiment shared by the entire town of Gerald. In this small community, no one is a stranger. That makes this disaster that much worse. I lost one of the girls in my grade, her two brothers, and you know, I knew everybody, because around here, you know, everybody's a small town, everybody gets along real good, and when you lose one person, you know, you feel like you lost a family member because you're all so close. Kevin Makel is a local teacher and a member of the volunteer fire department, the group with the grisly duty of collecting and identifying fallen friends. It's tough because, uh, because a lot of the people out there we do know. Uh, they went to school. Some of the kids that were living out there were, uh, were students of ours. Uh, it's going to be tough. You know, I mean, you're looking at 35 houses approximately that are, are destroyed. And that's the thing that's going to be hard. As many make the trip to this central Texas town, the devastation is striking. But it's not all that hits the heart. I want to say that I've never been sadder for my county than today. But I've also never been prouder. Proud of scenes like this. Neighbors care for neighbors in a makeshift shelter. Volunteers search through the rubble, hoping for a miracle. There's a whole bunch of baloney in there. They make sandwiches, collect clothing, and offer what support they can. At the high school, hundreds gather to break bread, touching base with what remains of their community. Can I give you a hug? And more help comes. This young volunteer all the way from Granger with a special delivery gifts for the children of Gerald. Because they lost all their other toys. She wanted to give them toys that she had, so she went through her toys and everything like that and wanted to bring them up here for the other kids. Local businesses pitch in as well, giving tens of thousands of dollars in food and supplies. God bless you all. I'm awful sorry this happened to your community. Governor Bush makes the trip to Gerald. I bet a lot of people really care for you more than you know. Reaching out to as many survivors as he can with words of encouragement that more help is on the way. There are some material things we can do. We can provide disaster relief. We can provide money. We can provide people. But the best thing we can do as a society and as a state is to pray for these good people. Prayers, hope, and good wishes. A few things we can all use a lot more of these days. And disasters do seem to bring out the volunteer spirit and people. Leslie Cook joins us now. And I know you visited a community in Cedar Park, one very hard hit. And were volunteers turning out there? They were turning out by the dozens and they were pouring in, it seems like, from everywhere, Stacy, When you walk through the streets of the Buttercup Creek subdivision, you get a great deal of a glimpse of the damage, a lot of debris there. But you also see people working to rebuild. It started as soon as the storm silenced. Volunteers didn't just take time to think, they just did. The sounds of help. Neighbors helping neighbors, and some that don't live next door. I don't know half the people here. There's three people that live in this house, and I guess there's maybe 15 or 20 people that have come out to give them a hand. You know, there's no names exchanged. You just do what you have to do. Mike Malik and little Nicole don't have to do anything. They don't even live in this neighborhood, but they came anyway. I just saw on television that all these houses got destroyed, and I just wanted to come out and help and get all this stuff out. It makes me feel pretty good. I mean, that people come out and help other people when, I mean, they probably have stuff wrong with their house, but ours is gone, and they're out here helping us, and they should be at work and all that kind of stuff, but they're just out here helping because it's in their heart to do it. These helpers have come by the dozens, responding to a voluntary call in an involuntary way. We moved here on Sunday. We moved in on Sunday. So we don't know anybody in the neighborhood, and everybody has been so nice. They've all come over and said, do you need some place to stay? Do you need some help? This guy, I have no clue who he is. He lives on the street. He said, y'all need some help? I have some tarps.
It seems there's so little beauty left, so little left to enjoy in this place that was once home. Yet there is much to be thankful for. There's also a lot to repair, a lot to rebuild. Hi there. Is there anything? Mm. I think we've, we've had lots of help and we're getting it all cleaned out. And they're going to knock it over and start building. Yeah. Several homeowners will start over. The lucky ones still have their walls, but many of them are forced to leave for now. In fact, we're moving into apartment uh, this afternoon. Uh, apartment owners just offered, you know, no deposit, no nothing, just move in. Uh, we'll take care of the paperwork later. Uh, there was a furniture company that uh, rents furniture that's going to furnish it for us so we don't have to worry about digging any of this stuff out from underneath the debris. Cleaning up will take an investment of time and money, but an investment in a neighborhood may mean new friendship and new lessons. It goes beyond some people just calling in and saying, well, if you need something, call me. Uh, these people have an asset. They brought it. You know, here, here is a sandwich. We're here on this earth to help out each other, not, not just in, in good times, but in bad times, too. And. Um, it could be me next. The tornado did not choose just one specific area of that neighborhood to plow through. It seemed to be hopping around, hitting many homes and many streets mm -hmm. in that one neighborhood. So it really is going to take a while for that community to fully recover. And it seems to me that there was such a mix of emotion with those people. There really were. I mean, first of all, they were sad, of course, and they're dealing with all the feelings of sorrow. But the homeowners that I talked to really seemed shocked and surprised by these volunteers coming in mm -hmm. from everywhere. So you do have a nice mix of emotions. All right. Thanks, Leslie. Robert? Well, one more time, we want to show you the phone number for reaching the Red Cross with your donations. The number there on your screen, it's 1-800-928-4271. The monies donated go directly to the victims through a voucher system, which will allow those devastated by the storms to purchase what they need through local stores. Again, the number, please call it 1-800-928-4271. And also, KXAN News 36 has set up a tornado relief fund with Norwest Banks in your donation payable to the American Red Cross to this address on your screen at uh, P.O. Box 2019, Austin 78768, or you can drop off your donation at any of the Central Texas Norwest Bank locations. Thanks once again for joining us tonight for Forces of Fury, a look at the deadly tornadoes that rocked Central Texas this past week. Now, if you'd like to purchase a copy of Forces of Fury, just write us here at the station. The address is P.O. Box 490, Austin, Texas, 78767. You could also call us at area code 512-476-3636. The video costs $19.95, and all of the proceeds are going to go to the Disaster Relief Fund. And when tornadoes present themselves as a force of fury, the pictures of the twisters and their aftermath are oftentimes heart-wrenching examples of nature at its angriest. News 36's Mike Price was one of the first photojournalists on the scene in Gerald for that F5 category tornado. Here's his account through pictures of what happened. Uh, the tornado was coming, and it was coming from the back of the house, and I could see it over the trees, and it had a long tail on it, mm -hmm. and I said, oh no, dear Lord, please not that. The devastation, the major devastation is probably a quarter to a half a mile wide and probably a, a, at least a mile long. I saw my neighbors right next to me outside looking at it, and we could all see it coming. And then I went inside and I never saw them again. They didn't make it. It was too large to outrun. And uh, judging by the damage, uh, too strong to have survived it in anything except away from its path. You can rebuild a home, but you can't, you can't bring back a loved one, and I understand that. And the most devastating thing about this storm is the loss of life.